Welcome to prefabricated structures. In today's video, we are going to see related to joint flexibility. It means that when a disunuting of structures, members is designed as a rigid or a semi-rigid in which the columns and beams are connected together in a such a way that there is a joint flexibility so that we can easily remove uh, whenever we want not to be uh, joint or whenever we have to dismantle that time and one more thing is it holds two parts hence that one can swing relatively to the other part in that way the joint flexibility can be utilized and joint flexibility makes us for a easy installation and easy uh, particular part can be installed at a particular place with without any small errors also uh, then types of joints so types of joints are of rigid joints hinge like joint and showed like joint so we can see there are the joints such as the particular part uh, first one is the rigid joint so rigid joints are adequate in addition to bearing of tension, compressive and shear forces for resistance to bending moments too. These joints make relative displacement and relative rotations are impossible. So there is a relative rotation, there is a relative displacement as particular loading will be there. That is not possible if the joints are continuously. Hinge like a joint, it can transmit a uh, forces passing through the hinge itself. So as we know the basic of a hinge, it is transferring a joint from one place to another point. That is the particular point can be going away. So also allow the certain rotation. These joints used in a construction with precast members are usually hinge like. The hinge like joint execution is similar and requires less working time than that of a rigid joint. Showed joint, these are exceptionally used in industrial construction and are justified for a long span only. These joints are chiefly used in a bridge construction for a long span bridges. So we can see the bridges are connected by connecting two separate girders, two separate members that time the whatever the joints are made those joints are known as the showed joints so this joint can be either a joint accomplished by a simple placing of a two members on each other and then fastening them so when we take two members and then fasten them that is known as the dry point joint and whereas when it comes for the another type of a showed joint it is a rigid joint is to be formed it is far more expedient to lengthen the steel bars of the members to be joined means they are coming out of the section and then we are making a overlapping or a particular welding will be there uh, between the two members reinforcements which are coming out while the discontinuity of concrete is avoided by a skillful subsequent concreting so this kind of joint requiring on not only a casting with cement mortar but also a subsequent concreting which is known as as a wet joint for a showed joint so in showed joints there are two types of joints one is dry joint one is wet joint then comes design of joints how the design of joints must be so Wherever we go for a joint design or a, any part of a design, we consider some of the factors. The factors such as if we consider a building design, we consider there are some factors for a building design. The particular plan will be there, then the part of sections will be there, then how much the dead load will be coming, how much is the live load will be coming, how is the soil going to take the place whether the column is going to be a correct beam is going to be a correct slab is going to be a correct in this way the whole building design is done then what about the joint design particularly a small joint design is it a most necessary yes it is a most necessary in the prefabricated structures because 
it must be based on a relevant standard specification or code of practices so as we use for a design of rcc structures is456 similarly we have number of code of practices for the design of joints for the prefabricated structures or we can call them as a bylaws bylaws by which we have to give in a jurisdiction of a laws such that there is any must something is special requirement or special recommendations so this type of special requirement of special requ uh, recommendations are provided in the code of practice standard specifications or bylaws so these have to be used for the particular part then it comes what type of joints we have to consider so some following points are to be taken whenever the prefabricated structures as we know prefabricated structures the 59 50% to 60% are already prepared at the plant because we prepare at the plant based upon the rcc design and concrete design whereas at site we are only making them to place at a particular point such that it defines is to be as a one of the member of the structure so in this condition loading first point comes loading under working condition and stability of structures loading condition during construction effects of shrinkage creep and temperature unequal settlement so these are the five points need to be taken care while the design of a joints is made so it is specifically for the prefabricated structures so first comes the loading under working condition so loading under working condition how we need to see this so it is not such that the load will be coming and it can be easily take a care no because as compared with the conventional concreting of a building conventional concreting of building is usually taken care by the designers or by the particular persons who are going to prepare a structure that time what happens a structure is constructed and the structure whenever it is constructed we have taken care that the above coming load is not neutral means it is not static it is dynamic while construction type because if we take a foundation is there column will be coming column form work will be coming then the particular columns are connected to beams lintels those form works will be coming a person is going to move for a form work and dismantling of form work then the load dead load is going to act as life load or a dead load then slab comes after slab casting again on the slab there are more part of loading such as the form work is dismantled and it is kept on the slab water shedding load is there such as for a curing water is there then other dynamic loads if we take a machineries above the particular roofing that type of load so in this part entire structure as well as each unit own must be designed to resist all conditions of loads all loads all loads forces and moments acting there on when the structure is in use means for a particular joint also we need to take a load which type of load is coming which type of force is acting which kind of moment is acting considering all three we need to design each and every joint so that is known as all the loadings are under working conditions the design has to be taken care then stability of a structure overall stability of the structure must be needed during each phase of construction so the overall stability of a structure must be needed during each phase of construction means whenever the structure is going to make another joint or we are going to put one more joint on a particular level of thing 
that time we have to see the stability of a structure and we need to take care about that particular stability of the lower part such as column has to carry a beam connection and a load of beam then a beam will be taking a load of a roofing cover so column must be stable in position such that it should not tilt due to casing of a beam joint or a beam connection or beam should be in a stable way such that it should not have a bending or getting away from the joints that way the stability has to be taken place so in each phase each phase means either it may be at a foundation level it may be at a ground level or it may be at a lintel level or it may be at a slab level those are the phases loading condition during construction so some loads may cause a higher stresses than those are normal usage means when one person can make the load can be taken and if you put a heavy loads on a structure so those are the loading conditions what type so temporary eccentric loading which acts as a, an a internal column in a eccentric loading means the one point is loaded heavily and other points are not at all loaded and temporary loadings are created due to what due to material stacking due to temporary supports due to erection if we take a erection part also sometimes a crane is made to uh, lower down the particular panel or particular element on a particular structure because again he should not pick it from the ground level for that reason he will be stacking over one of the so these are the construction loadings which comes under loading conditions during construction <coughs> then is effect of shrinkage and uh, creep and temperature so we know that uh, temperature variations will take a uh, type of a uh, shrinkage and creep a drop of a beams must be considered or a connection proper and for the structure as a whole if we have to consider the joints wherever are going to take they are more susceptible for the temperature drop and temperature rise so to minimize this effect it is very much desirable for the greater past of a shrinkage and a creep shortening to have a to take on place prior to the installation of the beams or prior to installation of the columns prior to installation of the roofing elements like that then comes unequal settlement so settlement is based upon the soil properties so how is the ground surface how is the soil when water is going to come in contact with a soil that time whether settlements are going to take place or it going to have a expansion in that these possibilities of settlements at a joint must be investigated before the construction so and uh, some recommendations which can be provided such that the unequal settlement so we can see that the reinforcement anchorages can be provided so we can interlock the reinforcements between the members such that it should not settle then we can provide the joints which are not just simply supported they are connected with some of the threadings so as we see there is a bolt and a nut connection joint with a thread so if we allow the nut to fall freely unless and until the thread is rotated it is not going to come out so such joints are to be prepared in reinforcements and they are inserted then providing chamfers for a sharp connection joints that time if we require some of the joints are to be increased with the strength that time the chamfers are provided so these chamfers are most proper and the bond between the particular connections can be easily considered so we can see that part of a uh, design section and the section which can be easily made such that the chamfer may be a step chamfer or may be a steep chamfer or it can be a connectivity part 
like that the other sections or sortings can be easily done then uh, bonding bonding between the material and bonding between the material material means we have to use the bond such that the structure cannot be bonded separately without a material so we know that the bonding is nothing but steel is embedded in the concrete whereas we can also say that the bond between the joints has to be created for the particular joints so whenever the joint connections are going to come that time we can see the particular sections are jointed or whether the bond is correct or not in between them in that manner the particular connections are to be seen and for the particular purposes we can say the bonds are much more clear for the constructions so one more point we can say in related to bond is that use of the particular bond surfaces with a vertical joint joints such that face in contact with a vertical joint or a cast in situ joint and a bond surfaces which should transmit vertical shear must either be rough or rubbed thoroughly so that there is a joint is clear if we provide any grouting or anything in that part then holes for our dowels and dowel bars so there are a uh, constructions we can see moreover in the road constructions we have seen if a concrete road is laid some of the reinforcements are provided at the edges those reinforcements are known as the dowel bars those are having some 1.6 meters inside the concrete as embedded and some are left outside 0.6 so 1.2 meter length of the rods are there so dowel holes should have a liberal dimensions especially with regard to length to the depth so what is the length and what is the depth moreover the material with which the hole should be filled means we can't fill it with any material we can't say only a cement grout can be added and it can be have a connections so in that way we cannot make it so for that particular part so moreover the material is most important and it must be specified should be filled must be specified which kind of the material we are using for the joints if the dowel bars are to transfer longitudinal forces longitudinal forces means when we are taking a movement of a vehicle that time we can see when we ever the brakes are applied that time the vertical lengthwise the force is going to act in the particular surfaces so these dowel bars should transfer the longitudinal forces at the joints at the joints the dowel show holes should be provided with ribbed walls ribbed walls which can interlock the dowel bars inside them by providing grouting it becomes as the form and a rigid joint then lastly the bolted connections so when using bolted connections tolerances can be increased by either providing one of the plates of each pair with a slot or by drilling the bolt hole in this plate after the beam is in place so we can provide a bolt connections between the sections or between the joints then that can be easily provided for the particular preparation or a construction of a joint mm, thank you and see you in the next video